Okay guys, should be a quick one for you today. I'm going to just discuss how there is no peer-reviewed evidence for climate science for the field as a whole. Not just climate alarmism, but there's actually no peer-reviewed evidence for climate science as a whole. So what is climate science based upon? As we all know, climate science is based upon this greenhouse effect idea. These diagrams like this, these flat earth diagrams where they divide solar input for some reason, they divide the real solar input, which is hot and creates our climate, and you can feel it when you go outside for some strange reason. They create a flat earth instead, and then the mathematical consequence of that is to divide the solar power by four, which is this factor right here. You see it. They just arbitrarily reduce the solar heating power by four. That's what they do. That's the beginning of climate science and climate science's greenhouse effect. They just reduce the power by four. Amazing, right? Let's start an entire field. So, did you know that there is no peer-reviewed evidence. There's no peer-reviewed empirical de demonstration. You know, I'm bringing up peer-reviewed because they love their peer-reviewed studies and they love you to cite peer review. Show me peer-reviewed evidence that um, climate science is wrong or climate alarmism is wrong. And of course, it's just a racket, which they all protect and they won't allow you to publish totally rational things in it. As you all saw me demonstrate, I tried to publish uh, the fact that the sun heats the earth and they wouldn't allow that to be published at the American Meteorological Society. So they won't allow you to publish saying that the sun heats the earth. What they will allow to be published is saying that the sun does not heat the earth because they all go along with this arbitrary division by four of the solar power. Let's just reduce the, the heat of the sun by a factor of four. Let's just say instead of your furnace in your, like it's winter time for me here, furnace is running all the time. Let's just arbitrarily say that the furnace is running at a quarter of its power producing a quarter of the heat that it produces. And why is it warm in the house then, even though the even though we're just gonna say that the furnace is a quarter as strong as it is? Well, it just magically makes up heat somehow well. So you know, that's what they're doing. It's just so ridiculous. So what there is in climate science is plenty of references to this idea. There's references for that, absolutely. You can find tons and tons and tons of references and energy budget diagrams like the Keelan Trenberth energy budget diagram, which I discussed in that um, uh, American Meteorological Society video, which I referenced, uh, and that Keelan Trenberth energy budget diagram, which is the standard energy budget diagram for uh, the earth and for, for climate science, it is based on this idea. It is based entirely on this idea that solar power is divided by four that you take the real solar power and you just divide it by four arbitrarily. And so, yes, you find tons of references in the peer-reviewed literature to this, but guess what you don't find? You do not actually find any peer-reviewed literature or evidence of this actual mechanism being demonstrated anywhere. I mean, how could you empirically, how could you peer-review a publication saying that the solar power is as quarter as a as strong as you measure it. I mean, what a strange thing, but so they don't, they don't have any peer reviewed evidence for that. And there's no papers in the peer reviewed literature saying that because obviously that would be impossible to do. So what there is instead is simply these diagrams which are referenced in peer review. And then they say, this is what we accept about how the climate works and how the sun works. And this is how, this is what we interpret every phenomenon in the climate through. So they interpret every phenomena in the climate through these diagrams, and that is how they reference this in peer review, but there's no actual peer review evidence for this mechanism itself. So I have a paper which I will link to you, which I wrote a few years ago. I'll link in the comment description so you can uh, go read it yourself. It's a pretty good read. Oh, this is the document here. The document is a note on Fourier and the greenhouse effect. So Joseph Fourier back in, was, when was this? 1700s, I think, actually empirically refuted the climate science greenhouse effect back then. Um, remember, I've said that instead of saying that this is a model for the earth, which is obviously ridiculous because it's flat and it's saying that sunshine is arbitrarily a quarter as strong as it actually is. They just arbitrarily do that. <laughs> ridiculous. And then they interpret the climate through that through the sun being a quarter as strong as it as it actually is on a flat earth. I mean, ridiculous. So anyway, you could actually just say, let's rejig this to represent something that can actually exist. Let's rejig this to be a greenhouse. So let's use the real solar power instead. Not Let's not arbitrarily divide it by four. We'll use the real solar power coming into a greenhouse. This is the bottom of the greenhouse. This is the glass roof of the greenhouse, right? And then we should be able to measure this same radiative mechanism, which they claim this backwards arrow creates more heat and generates higher temperature 
on the warmer surface, even though that means it would be heat flow from cold to hot, but they don't care about that because this is what they accept. And so they accept this model and say, this is what we're going with, even though it's you know entirely wrong as has been demonstrated many times. So we could uh, see if this mechanism, this physics that they've created here in this, in this free body diagram, so to speak, we could see if this actually has an effect and we can measure what the effect should be because the effect should be that a real greenhouse will get hotter than what the solar input is because the solar input is coming in and then the temperature is amplified by this cold arrow flowing back to the warmer surface and increasing the temperature. So there's a real simple experiment which can be performed here to actually demonstrate the mechanism. And guess what? Nowhere in peer-reviewed literature is there such a demonstration. Nowhere. There is not a single peer-reviewed paper anywhere in the world that exists anywhere, peer-reviewed or otherwise, that actually shows this mechanism in effect. This mechanism could be demonstrated in any greenhouse right now, instantly. Anyone could go into a greenhouse and perform the experiment and prove that this mechanism exists. But guess what? It's not possible to do that because all greenhouses uh, uh, only warm up to the temperature that they're heated by sunlight. They don't get hotter than sunlight with a temperature amplification mechanism, which climate science says should exist. So um, Fourier back in the 1700s had a friend, uh, de Saussure, I think his name was, who actually already experimented. They already did an experiment like this, seeing what the temperature would be. And I discussed in this paper what their results were. And their results were simply that you find the temperature of what the solar forcing input actually is the real solar forcing, not the solar forcing divided by four, because why would you do that? But the real solar forcing. So they actually demonstrated that a system like this comes to the temperature that it's being heated at, and there is no amplification to higher temperatures. They actually recorded the measurements. And so I discussed that in this paper, and I tried publishing this paper and uh, again somewhere else, and they wouldn't have it. The, I never even told you guys about that one. That was several years ago. Maybe I should try republishing all these papers in different journals somewhere or something. Um, I did upload this to uh, archive um, so you can uh, see the link there. I'll, anyway, I'll give the links for it uh, down below. So anyway, Fourier and de Saussure actually did an experiment to demonstrate whether or not this effect would exist. And they found that it doesn't. The, only, the temperature that it comes up to is only the temperature that it's heat, being heated by real-time sunlight. There is no amplification to higher temperatures. Now, what they should have found, and the temperature was like 110 degrees Celsius, because that actually is the temperature of sunlight, of sunlight coming in. That's actually what it is. So not surprising, hello, sunlight solar heating is, it's actually up to 121 degrees Celsius. It's actually higher than 121. I think it's almost 130 maybe or something like that at certain times of the year. So solar forcing from um, from sunlight, the, the temperature forcing from sunlight is quite high. So they measured a temperature of 110 degrees Celsius, which is in their, in their little box to try to uh, see how hot it would come. And so that just comes 110 degrees Celsius is what it's being heated at by sunlight. There's no temperature amplification. Now, if you work out the math for this, the math for this worked out with a single pane of glass is such that they should have found, I think I wrote it down here, they should have found 180 degrees Celsius. So it's a very obvious effect. It's very, very obvious. I mean, that's a big difference in temperature, 110 degrees. I mean, these guys back then, Fourier was doing research in thermodynamics back then. He's the father of thermodynamics, essentially, right? They would have been amazed to find such a incredibly high temperature being generated inside this box, 180 degrees Celsius. I mean, that is hot as heck, right? I mean, you're going to be almost uh, just incinerating things almost at that point. And then you add more layers and they actually had a several layer box, which I discuss in here. Um, so there's a single layer. So I discussed the physics. So if you have um, multiple layers, five layers, for example, and I think they actually had five layers in the box. So they had five layers and still only found the temperature of sunlight. If you have five layers and work out the math, it should have come to almost 300 degrees Celsius, 560 Fahrenheit. That's how hot their box should have gotten. So in fact, empirical evidence does exist um, for examining whether or not the climate science greenhouse effect exists is in effect. Fourier did it back in the 1700s, and it hasn't been re-seen or, I mean, retouched or revisited since, because obviously all of thermodynamics is based on what Fourier found, and he found that the radiative green effect of climate science all the way back in the 1700s doesn't exist. So there is no, and this is, this is how it would work here. 
Anyway, you can read this paper if you like. It's an easy read and it's a fun read. And so, yeah, so if their five layer greenhouse box was going to demonstrate the climate science greenhouse effect, it should have got to 560 Fahrenheit. So that is incredibly ridiculously hot. Instead, it only got to the temperature of sunlight, which is, of course, entirely what you would expect. And that's where our whole, you know, Fourier developed the whole Fourier transform um, development of modern thermodynamics from. So it would have been very easy to measure. Even with a single pane of glass, it should have got to 180 degrees Celsius, and they only still measured this, the temperature which you would expect generated from sunlight. So it was, would be a very easy thing to demonstrate, yet in all of climate science, there is no peer-reviewed or any <laughs> experimental demonstration of the climate science greenhouse effect. There is none. All that there is is references to this is the model that we're using and this is the model by which we are going to interpret everything in the climate and all climate phenomena. That's all that there is. So um, yeah, I'll link the paper down in the description. Please go read it. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. There's no peer reviewed evidence for climate science. All there is is a, a self-referencing loop of saying this is what we're basing everything on um, and so therefore that is our peer review standard, but there's no actual peer reviewed paper demonstration of this effect under controlled conditions with measured variables demonstrating this effect. Fourier did it with his friend Dussault Surrey, and you can calculate what the variables would have been for them. And they measured just solar heating only. They didn't they did not measure any temperature amplification from the supposed climate science greenhouse effect, which of course, I will repeat, this temperature amplification mechanism of the climate science greenhouse effect is postulated and invented because they divide solar power by four. They just divide it by four. I mean, it's just, it's just the dumbest thing, the biggest fraud, and it's all born out of a consequence of flat earth theory. It's literal flat earth theory. That's what we have for climate science, and that's what we have for our PhDs all across academia, they see this diagram, they see solar power being divided by four for no reason, and they agree with it and see nothing wrong with it. Okay, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care, everybody. Bye. Okay, one more thing, post-edit, because I know that some mouth-breathing climate scientist idiot is going to uh, bring this up and they're going to say, the divide by four isn't arbitrary, it's to average the solar power over the surface of the Earth, like Roy Spencer did. Guys, does the solar power average over the entire surface area of the Earth at once? Is that something that exists? Is what exists solar power divided by four all over the entire surface area of the Earth at once? Sure, you can make an energy budget diagram, which does that. But as I have demonstrated, and I tried to submit to the American Meteorological Society, I'll get this published somewhere else, don't worry guys, is an alternative energy budget diagram, which is, does the exact same thing. So this is supposed to be their energy budget diagram, their average energy budget diagram. And they have chosen to use a flat earth, and the mathematical consequence of that is that they divide by four, and then they say, well, that's the average solar power. The average solar power is a quarter of its power. So that's what they say. <laughs> Isn't that a good statement? There's a there's a good Godolian uh, or a Godolian incomplete statement right there. The average solar power is a quarter of the solar power. Does that statement make sense? Is this statement false? Okay, so anyway, that's an energy budget diagram which they have created and they have based climate science upon. However, you can create an entirely different energy budget diagram, which is the exact same thing in terms of being an energy budget diagram, an average energy budget diagram, but it shows something which is totally 100% uh, mutually exclusive and incompatible with this one. So in my energy budget diagram, you have real solar input coming in at its actual power on a spherical sur uh, Earth surface. And when you do that, you find that the sun can generate climate amazingly. With their basis and starting point of climate science, they have depicted the sun as not being able to create the climate and the sun as not being able to heat the earth above minus 18 degrees Celsius. Amazing, right? So you can create an entirely alternative energy budget diagram, which is the same thing in terms of being an average energy budget diagram. 
However, it shows something mutually exclusive to theirs. And what is the exclusive difference? Is that it demonstrates that the sun can create the climate and that the sun heats the earth. So isn't that amazing? So yes, I grant you that what you have done is not just arbitrary, you had a reason for doing it. Your reason for dividing the solar power by four is because you're averaging the solar power over the entire surface area of the earth at once. All I have to ask you is, does that actually exist? Well, they say that exists of an average, as an average. Sure, that exists as your mathematical average. The question in physics is, and in science is, does that average actually exist in reality? Is it an actual thing that is driving physics? Well, of course not, because the solar power does not spread over the entire surface area of the Earth at once as an input, which is what this model of theirs actually depicts. And again, what I have demonstrated is that you can create the exact same thing in terms of being an energy budget diagram, an average energy budget diagram. But in my average, you do not divide the solar power by four and you don't have to. You keep the solar power where it actually exists. And then you find an output equal to the divide by four value, which is reasonable because the output is coming over the entire sphere. The input is only coming over a hemisphere. And with input, average input coming in over a hemisphere, you find that sunlight can create the climate. So there you go. I hope that was useful. Okay, guys. All right. I'm done. Have a good day. Bye-bye. How do you turn this thing off? Right here. Bye.